Hello everybody, I'm Roman Rogers and we will continue with uh, a chapter on motion and force. In the previous uh, uh, lesson, uh, same chapter, we, we learned about uh, force, the definition of force, the unit of force, the laws of motion, Newton's first, second and third law of motion and also about mass and weight and the difference between mass and weight. Uh, in this lesson we will be discussing about motion of bodies connected by spring and uh, there are two cases number one when most when the bodies are moving vertically and number two when one body is moving vertically and the other is moving horizontally so first let's discuss about case number one where the bodies you see them moving vertically one moving upward and the other downward now you have two masses over here um, if you look at it the two forces acting on the body a are this tension and the other is the weight so here the body since it is moving downward as you can see the weight is greater than the force and or the tension you could say so w minus t is equals to f uh, f is your neck force acting on the body so since it is m1 the mass of the body so when W is equal to mg, so we can say that F is equal to mg minus T. T is the tension, as I said earlier. And force, you know, is equal, according to Newton's second law of motion, is F is equal to ma. So we will write it down as m1a. Now this gives you the first uh, equation that m1g minus T is equal to m1a. Now the force acting on body B, as you know. It's uh, moving upward, so the tension is greater than its weight. So the net force will be uh, T minus M2G, because we are talking about the body 2. So T minus M2G is equal to M2A. This is your second equation. When you add the two equations, you get M1G minus M2G is equal to M1A plus M2A. Now taking G common on the left-hand side and A common on the right-hand side, we get... Uh, m1 minus m2 times g is equal to m1 plus m2 times a and since we are finding the acceleration so acceleration will be the difference of two masses m1 minus m2 over the sum of two masses m1 plus m2 the whole times g now when you substitute the value of acceleration in any one of the equation you will get tension and the value of t will be two times product of the two masses m1 and m2 over the sum of two masses m1 plus m2 the whole to the terms g as you can see over here uh, there's w2 and r they are equal and opposite there's, it's not reacting on it and if it is acceleration accelerating then t is equals to m2 or you could say t is equals to 4 and uh, force is according to the second law portion is ma so t is equals to m2a this will give you a second equation. When you add the first and second equation, you get uh, the value for acceleration, which is m1 over m1 plus m2g. And when you substitute the value of a in any one of the equation, 1 or 2, the value of t, which is m1 m2 over m1 plus m2, the whole g. Now, we move on to the next topic, and that is law of conservation of momentum. Now, for two bodies, uh, um, two or more bodies in an isolated system acting upon each other, their total momentum will always remain same unless an external force is applied. Momentum mathematically can be said as mass times velocity. Now, if uh, A is equals to M1 and B is equals to M2 and V1, U1 is the change in momentum, uh, change in velocity and V2, U2 is also change in velocity for the second body. So you can see that the change in momentum of particle A will be M1 times uh, V1 minus U1 and change in momentum of particle B will be M2 times V2 minus U2. So going to the third law of motion, we have FBA is equal to minus FAB or FBA will be M2 times U2 which is equal to M2 V2 minus U2 upon B and FAB is equal equals to m1 v1 which is equals to m1 v1 minus v1 over t so 
you can see over here under the equation finally we get m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equals to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 t and t will cancel out so what does this equation mean the above equation is the law of conservation of momentum and u1 m1 u1 and m2 u2 is the representation of total momentum of particles a and b before collision and m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is the representation of total momentum of particles a and b after the collision. So we can see that the momentum before and after the collision always remain same. We will now move on to friction. Friction is a force that opposes the motion of a moving object. There are various types of friction. Basically, uh, we consider two types of friction. One is the kinetic friction and the other is static friction. So, um, some other example of friction can be rolling friction, sliding friction and friction. Now, what is static friction? Uh, static friction is a friction force acting upon between the surfaces at rest with respect to each other and called force of static friction. For example, a heavy box against the ground, difficult to lift and move, a nightstand resting on a light table, a dry and wet plastic where the second has less friction than the first, friction toys that imitate the behavior of force in case of vehicles but in a static way. Kinetic friction is uh, the force of frictional force acting upon between the surfaces in relative motion called force of kinetic friction. Example of kinetic friction are uh, feet against the ground when walking, the wheels of a bicycle against the ground, underwater vehicle with the friction it exerts on water, skates on an ice or concrete ring, and uh, sliding friction uh, slides over another surface. This frictional force that comes into action is sliding friction. Rubbing both hands with each other is a simple example of sliding friction. Fluid friction is the frictional force of an object moving through a fluid like water or air is called fluid friction. It is also called drags. Then you also have rolling friction. Uh, wheel is one of the most important invention in the history of mankind as we all know. And when the axle of a wheel is pushed, the force of friction between the wheel and the ground at the point of contact provides the reaction force and the reaction force acts on the contact point on the wheel in the direction opposite to the applied force. So, this is the example of uh, relation. The advantages of friction is that we cannot write if there were, would be no friction between paper and pencil. Friction enables us to walk on the ground. We cannot run on a slippery ground, obviously. Um, so, slippery ground offers very little friction. Hence, anybody who tries to run on a slippery ground may meet with an accident. Birds could not fly if there was no air resistance. The reaction of pushed air enables us, the birds to fly. Thus, in many situations, we need friction, while in another situation, we need to reduce it as much as possible. The disadvantage of friction, well, there are several disadvantages. So, friction is undesirable when moving at high speed because it opposes the motion and thus limits the speed of moving objects. Um, in machine, friction can cause wear and tear of the moving parts and which may cause heat. As you know that most of our useful energy is lost as heat and sound due to the friction between various moving parts of machine. Now how do we reduce these uh, friction? Friction can be reduced by um, yellow bricketing, the sliding surface, uh, using ball bearings or roll-up bearings because the rolling friction is lesser than the sliding friction. So making a fast moving object a streamlined uh, shape is also an example like you see these days the cars and airplane, they are streamlined, uh, the bullet is streamlined so that we move faster. Uh, even the cyclist, the helmet is streamlined and this causes the smooth flow of air and thus minimizes air resistance at high speed. The coefficient of friction is denoted by a Greek letter mu and it is a measure of the amount of friction existing between two surfaces. A uh, low value of coefficient friction indicates that the force required for sliding to occur is less than the force required when the coefficient of uh, uh, friction is high. So, coefficient of friction mathematically can be written as frictional force over normal force. So, and if the frictional force would be equal to the end. So, in this uh, chapter, we cover the following topics. We discussed about motion of bodies connected by a spring moving vertically and uh, the other case was that one body is moving vertically, the other horizontally. We also discussed about the law of conservation of momentum. We did the derivation of conservation of momentum, friction, types of friction, advantages and disadvantages of friction. 
We also discussed how the methods of reducing friction and corrosion of friction as well. So I hope it's clear to you all. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Till then, take care.